C-Sharp includes a special type of collection which stores elements in a LIFO style. And LIFO stands for Last In, First Out. C-Sharp includes a generic and non-generic stack and here we are going to learn about the non-generic stack. Let us go to Visual Studio and see how we can create an empty stack. To create a stack we can use the stack keyword, so for that we write stack, my stack is equal to new stack. And if you want to add elements to a stack, we can use the push method. So let's write in here my stack dot push. Let us define the first object to be a string. So hello there. Then next let us add a number. So for that we write my stack dot push one. Let us add two more numbers. So for that we write in here two and then three. Now let us add a double, so my stack dot push 4.5. Let us add a null value, so my stack dot push, and then here define the object to be null. And then at the end, let us add one more value. So my stack dot push end of stack. Save the changes. Now if you want to see the result, we can use a for each loop. So for that we can write in here for each and then var stack item in my stack then console dot right line and then write in here stack item press ctrl f5 to see the result so here we have the end of stack we have a null and we have 4.5 and at the end we have the hello there so we see that even though we provided the first value to be the hello there we get it as the last one and that's right because we said that a stack stores elements in a LIFO style. So last in, first out. And the element that we entered the last was the end of stack. And that's why we get that element as the first one. An important method in a stack is the peak method. And the peak method returns the last or the topmost value from a stack. And if we call the peak method on an empty stack, it will throw an invalid operation exception. Before we test the peak method, let us change the end of stack to top of stack because it makes more sense. And now let us use the peak method. So console.write line, write in here the peak of the stack is, and then inside curly brackets write my stack dot peak. Control F5 to see result. So here we see that the peak of the stack is the top of stack element. Now let us remove an element. And since we can access only one element at a time, so starting from the top and going to the bottom, we can use the pop method. And the pop method will remove the top element and return it at the same time. If you call the pop method on an empty stack, the same way like the peak method, it will raise an invalid operation exception. So let us copy in here line 19 and paste it just before that and don't change the text in here, just change the method from peak to pop, control F5 and in here we see that the peak of the stack is the top of stack element and after we remove this element by using the pop method, the next peak of the stack is going to be the null value. Let us use the pop method one more time, so my stack pop and then write in here console.write line stack length is equal to and then in here write my stack dot count so this is the property that we use to get the number of elements in a the stack then copy this line and paste it after the peak method save the changes and control f5 to see the result so here we see that the length is 7 we remove the top of stack using the pop method. We remove one more element using the method again. So now we see that we are left only with five elements. And if you want to check if a certain element exists within a stack, you can use the contains method. So for example, let us write console.write line. My stack has a three. And is this statement true or false? For that we can use the my stack 
object.contains method and then you can define the object to be the value 3. To see the result, press Ctrl F5 and we see that the statement is true. So we learned that to remove the elements one by one, we can use the pop method starting from the element at the top. But if you want to remove all the elements from a stack, you can use the clear method. So in here, you will write my stack dot clear. And that's all. If we now press the control F5, we're going to see that the statement is false. And we don't see any values using the for each loop because now the stack is empty. So this is all for this part. But before we proceed to the next one, it's important to know that the stack stores the values in a LIFO style, where LIFO stands for last in first out. It uses the push method to add elements into the stack. The pop method returns, but removes the elements from the top of the stack. And the pick method always returns the topmost element in the stack. If you use the pop or the pick method in an empty stack, then an exception is going to be thrown. 